Hold on one second. We gotta start this off the right way. Incredible. Is this your dog? Oh, that's right. Child? So, dog? Child? So listen, mm. Dylan, Dylan and Jessica, child. we're gonna talk about uh, if we're gonna talk about love and monsters. I had to bring bring my best supporting character to the interview. Uh, yes. And start by talking about one of the best characters in the whole movie, which is of course. Hell Boy. yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. That was Nova. That's my little girl, Nova. Uh, but but so you guys worked with uh, with a, a dog named Boy. What is that like on set? How do you like what changes on set when you're working with a little pup? So happy we're talking about this. Um, well, first of all, it's like it's it's yeah. I mean, like you have like this dog around. You know, two of them actually. Two there was two. Hero and Dodge, um, and. They're just like, yeah, it's, it's just like, it's, it's actually incredible how often I emotionally leaned on these dogs, you know, like I would just go and roll on the ground to them whenever I was like tired or something and they would just lick my face. And there's also something like uh, super incredible about how like, there's like, they're not like allowed to, this is terrible because I love this so much, but they're not like allowed to like interact with anyone but me. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, most of the time, unless unless it's a day where they have to focus on interacting with another actor, then I have to like take the day staying away from them, which was awful. Uh, <laughs> there were days where like Ariana, like for a few hours, could be the only one coming with the dogs, and I was like, I'm gonna kill her. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh yeah. man, that's that's funny. That's cool. That that sounds like a really fun experience. And also, I mean, I, I'm a big Walking Dead fan. So speaking of crazy animals on set, you also worked with Michael Rooker. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> I know he's a he's a he's a really fun guy who just doesn't have an off switch on the energy. Did he give you any any apocalypse advice after working on uh, on Walking Dead? I don't even think he remembered that he was in the Walking Dead. Uh, I was like, dude, I loved you in Walking Dead. He's like, say hey, what? <laughs> Uh, was, I was, like, I, was I, I on that show? Character uh, in The Walking Dead. That. He's like, oh, I got no idea what you're talking about, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that sounds very accurate. Yeah, um, yeah. he uh, he. That's such a great way to describe him. He really like his energy is uh, nonstop. He's hilarious. Rooker's unreal. Yeah, yeah, he's he's one of a kind. Oh, okay, so now this this one's for both you guys. Uh, there's a scene, a really cool action sequence. Um, where you both have to fight a giant crab in, in, a, in a, and that's not even a metaphor. You're literally fighting a giant crab. Uh, and I'm curious, like, when you're on set that day on the beach and there's this, like, is any of that real? Like, is that, because it looked very convincingly in existence. So I'm, I wanted to know, was any part of that thing really there or are you guys kind of looking at things that are just completely non-existent? That was a tennis ball on a stick. And then there was this blow up crab that we had sometimes. Yeah, really. they would they would drag out this gigantic blow up crab that they that they ordered uh, two of from China, um, and like uh, it was like to take a reference sometimes. Like it would obviously never be there when we were shooting, but it was hilarious that it even existed. Um, but that whole set was real. Like they like made that whole beach set, so the environment was totally practical. There would just be times. I remember there's a whole thing that like, I remember like being on the beach and literally like mapping out um, like my fight with this crab or like where it would hit and how I would, this whole like backing up sequence, um, just all like making it up on the spot. Like just being like, okay, like first it sweeps my legs and then I can roll over as it comes down like this and then I'll scurry up and then it'll knock over that house thing and like all just doing it to nothing. So much fun. That's what I thought maybe it was kind of like like Game of Thrones with the dragons where they kind of had like a piece of it. But that whole thing was uh, was computerized. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. Wait, so so just I mean, you I mean, I, I want to know just because I know you can't say too much about other films, but how did the kind of experiences compare with the monsters here versus I mean, like monsters as tall as the Empire State Building on Congress Godzilla? <laughs> um, no, so I actually didn't. Oh, I didn't interact that much with the monsters on Godzilla vs. Kong. That's fair. Um, but it, it, with my experience on that was similar in that it was a mixture of practical and uh, uh, CG. Yeah, very cool. Well, listen, we don't want to get you in trouble, so I, I, well, I, I respect it. Uh, and so I watched in the beginning of this movie, I feel like we all kind of uh, can understand Joel's uh, mentality of, of wanting to stay inside, but also missing the outside world because Joel had an outside world and, and Amy had an outside world before 
the monsters came to existence in this in this universe. Uh, so I'm curious for you guys, what uh, what kind of uh, this year in in feeling that way have you learned to really appreciate that you never really thought was was a little thing that you'd miss so much? What what have you kind of realized? Maybe we took that for granted a little bit. Uh, everything, um, but like it's really like also just sharpened things in a focus that has weirdly like simplified perspective you know like um uh, uh in such a weird contrast to like this chaos you know which is which is interesting but like sort of well incredibly humbling and like sort of comforting in a way like like things that mean something to me that are the things that are paramount right now are like just like the health and well-being of like your loved ones you know what i mean like things that you like go go so often like forgotten about or just like pushed to the back when really ultimately that is like those are the most important things you know what i mean all of your little fucking problems like kind of go away you know um which which is like i don't know it's a, it's a really good like reality check you know um the amount of the amount of checking in that like i think i just you know routinely do now on everyone i love and, I, and i'm so lucky to have so many like people I love in the world, you know, so many like dear, dear friends of mine that I've come across and are still with me and just like nurturing those relationships. It's just like, you know, it's, it really just shifts things into perspective, you know? And, yeah. um, and yeah, it makes you, makes you miss people too. It makes you miss socializing and like, it's really interesting how, uh, <laughs> how much we've lost it a little bit socializing wise. Like I feel like I'm being weird right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, for, I don't know what to do with my hands anymore. I don't. <laughs> what, do I, what are these things? <laughs> the, so, can run, uh, yes. uh, listen, for, I, don't, I can't speak for anybody else. I've, I've passed a little bit of the time in quarantine here doing a little bit of extra drinking than I think I usually would. And both of your hey, characters baby. movie uh, both have to kind of put on a drunk face at one point in the film. And it's kind of like there's some... There's a little bit extra going on. I don't want to spoil anything. But, but I know in movies, that's a little tricky thing to do on a set. What is the key to a good drunk face on camera? Um, yeah. For me, I mean, I've seen, the thing is, I've seen recordings of myself drunk. So it's actually pretty easy to just mimic that. Like my eyes just get really, like my eyelids get really sleepy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just look like I'm permanently on the verge of falling asleep. So. That was that was my big thing. There was so actually true. more drunk stuff that I'm sad was taken out. Tired and so happy you are as a drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and direct. You shut up. You Caleb, shut up. look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dylan me. taught me all these drinking games when we were in Australia. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, now I'm coming to we'll the next one, set. Really. I'll bring the. Uh, I'll bring <laughs> yeah, we'll play it to the next set. Time. <laughs> so I, I found it really interesting i don't know if you guys have seen anything like this but uh we're always watching superheroes here at comicbook.com and, and brie larson did a youtube video uh where she kind of opened up about a lot of roles that she auditioned for and she didn't get the part and then she watched the movie and was like oh they did such a good job in that and oh wow there's a way of yeah, kind of going yeah. on and you find your way anyway and, and, and i'm curious if you guys would be willing to talk about any of that has there ever been a role that you auditioned for and thought would be really cool. And then you ended up watching someone else do that part and you thought like, wow, they did a really great job. It's hard to imagine anyone else in that. Oh yeah. I mean like every, to the point where I can't even like think of one right now because I feel like it's so common that that happens. But then it's also just like, I don't know. I so like when it's that person's movie, it's that person's movie, you know, so that's, so it's like, it, yeah. it then sort of never would have been yours or would have like, I don't know, I can't ever process it. Like, I'm never like looking for those movies that I like auditioned for and I'm like, oh, I gotta see what, you know. It's just like once it doesn't happen, then that's not your movie, like you just move on. So I don't know, I'm trying to think of one right now though. Just yeah. take it for a <laughs> <laughs> No, hey, I'm gonna keep you to take it. Uh, <laughs> I'm the same, I think that's the healthiest way. If you're an actor, you kind of have to let it go as soon as you don't get it. Otherwise you'll just go crazy. Um, I do watch things sometimes, but it's not in like a a, a a bad way. It's more in just like, I want to celebrate them and um, see what they did with it. Like I'm actually really good friends with some people who have booked roles that I didn't get. Wow, uh, that's pretty cool. It's a small, yeah. it's a small yeah. there in Hollywood, you know? 
Yeah. yeah, and I'd be like so upset too. So, like the movies are so, the experience is so personal to you, you know, like that like, I don't know, it's weird if I've ever had like an actor come up to me like after like a whole experience that was like my experience and meaningful to me and be like, oh dude, like I was so pissed when you got that part. Like it just, I'm just always like, what? I've had that. I've had actors come up and I've say that. I've had it too and I'm just like, Brain oh, you're, weird. you're one of those weird, I don't like that. That's, <laughs> yeah, what do you even say at that point? Like I, oddly competitive, like, that audition you probably auditioned for that two years ago like yeah it's just like, and, it's, and it is like what do you say i i've just been like oh i'm sorry and you're <laughs> just like, i'm like that's my family <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like you're basically now saying like oh man i should have been in that family in city i'm like but that's my experience now <laughs> that's great yeah well so that would be i don't know what i would do but all right yeah. so i have two last things for you um one first for dylan i mean obviously look if you look around here marvel dc fan no surprise um, sure. And I don't know if you're aware of this. If you read what's on the internet, the fans of both Marvel oh, and DC have cast you in so many roles themselves. From me. Nova with Marvel to like Terry McGinnis or Nightwing with DC. Uh, Wait, would you ever your dog's name after that character? Yes, that is my favorite character. And listen, you. that's one of those roles I'm going to come up to you for and say, that should have been me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, I, don't care, <laughs> what? I don't care if it was a wonderful experience for you that it's like super deeply personal to you in your life now. I'm like, <laughs> but so my my first of these last two questions for you, Dylan, is uh, would you ever want to join? Like, because because Jessica is no stranger to Marvel, so would you ever have you ever like flirted with that idea or had a character in mind that you thought would be fun or you saw people online talking about for you you thought was cool? I've flirted. I've gone on a date with the idea, okay. like one of those like not bad first dates, but just like you know where it was fine and. We haven't called each other. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you I mean like I don't know. I don't know. I, I, you know, I, like if I'm being honest, like it's not. I, I, do, I, I, that's not something deeply like, uh, uh, like one of my geek things that I geek out about. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I geek yeah. out about baseball. You know, I, I geek out about a lot of things. But like, um. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. It would just be like anything else, really. If something I thought, I mean, I, I was, obs I definitely was obsessed with Spider Man. Like, I like loved Spider Man growing up. You know, um, my dad worked on that first Spider Man movie, like the Tobey Maguire one, and I like remember going to see it at my friend's tenth birthday party. It was super cool because my dad had worked on it, and we were like, ah. And it's like that's super. That's deeply personal to me. But like, yeah, I mean, I don't know anything else. It would have to be like if I thought it was cool, or yeah, um, yeah. if I liked it, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and my, and my last thing, and this is for Jessica, um, I think the movies that made me fall in love with movies for the first time were the Matrix movies. And if it's on the internet, it has to be true. So I've, I've heard your work in there. And what, what made me love those movies was how innovative they were and awesome that was. So that's really, I don't want to know anything about the story. I know that's like, they'll, they'll, they'll find you. Uh, but like, is that experience, like, is it as epic and kind of feeling as advanced and like futuristic as we, the fans, think it's going to be? For there you. are definitely moments on set where where Yahya and I look at each other and we just go, Matrix Four, Matrix Four. <laughs> Those pinch me moments. And um, yeah, Lan is doing some really interesting things uh, on a technical level in the same way that you know she created a style back then. I think she's she's going to change the industry again with this film. Um, there's some camera rigs that I've never seen before that we're using. Uh, that's probably all I can say for that. I can't, cool. listen, I'm that's all in. Cool I can't stuff. wait. It, 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 I can't wait for everybody to see Love and Monsters on October 16th. Dylan O'Brien, Jessica Hennick, thank you so much Thanks, for coming, guys. Have fun with the rest of your day. Yeah, thank you. Too. Cheers. <laughs>